okay, look, right off the bat, if I look disheveled, it's because I am. I'm in the process of growing my hair back out to get my locks back, and I have no idea what to do with it when it's in its phase, so I just kind of put water on it and let it exist. Also, my life is in disarray. But don't look at me, look at this, because this is what we're here to talk about today. This is my Sony a7 III rig setup for video and cinema, and it's relatively budget. I posted it on Instagram and a couple other sites like that, and a lot of people asked me to break it down. I'm lying like shit. It was like one or two people max, but let me live. Anyway, people asked me to break down a setup, so that's what we're gonna do. So if you've been following me on social media, then you may know that I had a Sony a7R 3 that I had rigged out. And one day I decided to leave it in the back of my car. I had it hidden in under some blankets and stuff under the back seat, but somebody decided to pull a Jasmine Sullivan, bust the windows out my car, took it and kept it moving. So there's that. I hope it mended your broken heart. I'll probably always have these scars, but right now, I don't care about that part. But anyway, let's get into the setup. I'll go through each component and let you know what it is and why I have it. Okay, first let's talk about some of the goals that I had in mind when I was researching all the components that I wanted to add to this rig. So first and foremost, I wanted it to be fairly inexpensive, budget friendly, because of the fact that I was replacing my old camera and I took a hit when I lost that. So I basically had to get everything from scratch. Secondly, I wanted it to be lightweight or fairly lightweight. I wanted to keep the weight down as much as possible, but still have everything that I needed on it. Third, I wanted to be able to switch from having a shotgun mic to wireless audio fairly quickly. And the final thing is that I wanted something that I could break down easily because I do go between using handheld to putting this on a gimbal and I also shoot photos sometimes too. So I wanted to be able to have something that I could just bring down back to this form pretty quickly. So the main course of this meal is the a7 III itself. I decided to go with the a7 III instead of the a7 R3 again because basically it's cheaper and it has the same video capabilities of the a7 R3, if not slightly better. So I really wanted to wait for the a7 IV, but of course that was announced right after my return period ended for this. So tough luck, I guess. The second main thing is gonna be this lens. This is the Sony 24 to 105 G with OSS, which is optical steady shot, which is basically like image stabilization. So I had a handful of different options when I was looking into what lens I wanted to get for this setup. I couldn't decide between this, the Tamron 28 to 75 F 2.8, the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 or just going with the lens that I had on my last setup which was the Sony G Master 24 millimeter prime 1.4 so because all of those lenses have a lower f-stop they are better in low light than this lens so the bottom line the reason that I ended up going with this lens ultimately is because of the versatility of the zoom range and the optical steady shot so because I do a lot of video, that optical steady shot's going to really help and smooth out the handheld footage and whatnot. And that's something that none of the other lenses had. So the glue of this setup is this small rig 2645 camera cage. This is for the A7R3 and the A7 III since they share the same body. This is the new updated version with the new colorway, which I think is fire. It's like this olive and red color. And this is pretty much the rug that ties the room together. So a cage essentially provides you with the foundation to put everything else onto the camera that you're gonna add to your rig. So you put this cage on your camera and not only does it provide protection and just make it look beautiful, look at that, delectable. But it also allows you to add all of the other components. It has all of these slots and holes and all of that, and you just screw whatever you need on your for your rig onto this cage. Another dope thing about this cage is that it has this magnetic Allen key built into the bottom of it. So you can use that to basically tighten up all of the other components and whatnot on this setup. So that's a nice little addition on this cage. So I did mention that this is the updated cage. I used to have the old half cage for this camera and it was just a lot more square and rigid. 
plain black it didn't really look as good and this one is a lot more rounded the corners are rounded and on the old ones it was just like i said square and rigid so this one's a lot nicer to hold and it just feels better in the hands so before I get into the rest of the main components, I just want to talk about some of these small components that I have added. The first thing being this HDMI cable lock. So the A7 III series has these notoriously bad HDMI ports. You put the cable in there and it just kind of wiggles around and loses connection a lot. So what this small rig HDMI cable clamp does is you put the cable in there, you turn this little lever right here and it just kind of locks the cable in place and you don't have to worry about it wiggling around or anything like that the next thing is this cold shoe adapter right here this is an extra one that i added to this setup and i'll explain why later but it's for my fill monitor mount the next thing is just this arca swiss tripod release plate and i just have this on here so i can easily put this on and off the tripod that i'm using which is a me photo road trip which i'll probably talk about in another video so these little red and black things are actually the anchor points for my Peak Design camera strap. And I have those on there so I can easily take the camera strap on and off, which is what this Peak Design system is made to do. It's just definitely a lifesaver because I like to, I obviously don't want the camera strap when it's on a rig, but I also like to carry this around when I'm just shooting like running gun video for myself or when I'm just shooting photos. So that's definitely a good thing to have. So the last miscellaneous addition I have to this setup is this extended eye cup that I got from this company called Kiwi Photos on Amazon. And it's marketed to people who wear glasses. And look, the first review on the Amazon page says that don't buy this if you wear glasses, even though it's marketed for people that wear glasses, it doesn't work. It ends up just pushing the glasses further into your face and you can't even see the full frame. But you know what? Like stupid people leave Amazon reviews sometimes. So I was just like, let me try it. It looks dope. Let me see how it works out. And what do I know? All it does is push the glasses into my face and I have to move my face around to see the whole frame. So thanks Amazon guy. I wish I would have listened, but I'm stubborn and hard headed. And oh yeah, I forgot to add. The only reason I have it on here is because about a week ago, I lost my original eye cup on a hike. So I just haven't bought the original eye cup yet. So I'm just using this for the time being. Basically in short, I can't recommend this eye cup, but if you don't have glasses, it probably would be better than the original eye cup because it blocks out like more light on the side because it's extended and whatnot. So this is the small rig 2642 wooden side handle. This is the updated version that was redesigned to go with the newly redesigned cage. And basically what this does is provide another point of contact. So it allows you to basically handle the camera in a much smoother way when you're shooting video, when you're shooting handheld. So it's definitely something that I would recommend. And not only does it help with the handling and the camera movement, but it also has another cold shoe mount on top. So it allows you to put something else on the camera. Also, I did want to point out that this can be adjusted for either the left or right side. So you can take this off and rearrange it and swap it on this side. You could also just get another one of these and have one on this side. And a lot of people do that because it does make the camera handle even better than just having one on here. So this is something I would recommend for any rig that you're building. And next up is this Rode shotgun mic. And this is basically Rhodes entry level shotgun mic. I used to have the Video Mic Pro, which sounded phenomenal. And this doesn't sound too far off. It's a little bit more tinny than a Rode Video Mic, but for what I use it for, it works perfectly. Usually when I'm using a shotgun mic, I'm just using it to record the ambient sound of a scene or when I'm just shooting like vlog style or running gun style video. And basically I just sit that right there on that wooden side handle that I just showed you. So it sits like that. The one thing that I do like over the Video Mic Pro that I used to have, I had the first generation of that. This one turns on and just operates as soon as you turn the camera on. So whereas the old Video Mic Pro that I had, you had to turn that on as well in addition to the camera. So there would be some times when I would start recording and forget that I didn't turn on the mic. So with this, you don't have to worry about that. As long as it's plugged in, it's gonna work. So the next thing is this. So the next thing is this wireless mic system. And this is also by Rode. This is their wireless Go 2. 
So with this, I basically put this right here on that little divot in the cage right there. I basically just switch this cable over right from the shotgun mic and just go directly from having my shotgun mic to my Rode Wireless Go system right here. I use this more often than not. Generally, when I'm filming YouTube videos, especially when I'm out in the field, I'm using this Wireless Go. And it comes with these two transmitters right here. This one has the wind muff that comes with it on there. This one doesn't. And basically, the they both have built-in mics, so I could just put this on myself or on my client or whatever. You could also run a lavalier to it, so you could just put it like on a pocket or on a belt clip or something like that, run a lavalier up and then capture audio like that. You can have two transmitters going at one time, so it's good if you're filming like an interview or a conversation or something like that. And there's also an app. I haven't used it yet, but apparently the app opens a lot more features up for this system and you can control your audio a little bit better than you could with just this. Next main thing is gonna be this Andy Sene A6 Pro Field Monitor or EVF. And this is the reason I had that cold shoe adapter on here that I talked about before. I have this, I bought this with the cold shoe monitor mount because of the fact that I use this on my gimbal as well. And it just makes it easy to swap this from my camera to my gimbal because I do go back and forth between the two quite a bit. And then also I talked about how I had that HDMI cable clamp on here, and this is for this as well. This is a 5.5 inch screen with a higher resolution than the three inch screen that you get on the Sony a7 III itself. So this is very much a budget screen, especially compared to something like the Atomos Ninja 5, which you'll hear most people talk about when they're building a rig. This one doesn't have internal recording or anything special like that. It's just a screen to help you compose. So the monitor mount on the other hand, this is the small rig 2905 tilt and swivel monitor mount. And right off the bat, I'm just gonna tell you is I hate it. I can't wait to upgrade and get something better than this. And I'm gonna rant for like the next two minutes or so. So if you just wanna skip that, just go to the next section down in the description and skip it because- I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad. I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad. Let me tell you why I'm mad, son. Okay, so first off, in order to adjust the tilt on this monitor mount, you have to have a different size Allen key than everything else on this system, on this setup. The one at the bottom, doesn't work, it's too big for that. So you have to carry around this extra spare Allen key or have like a multi-tool or something just to tilt this. Like it's made by the same company. Why wouldn't you just have the same like universal Allen key measurement or whatever? If you do loosen it enough to tilt, the more you tilt it, it just becomes loose. So after a while, it's just gonna start flopping around like on some magic carp and you just have to sit there and deal with it and look stupid. So you'll be sitting there filming and it's just, just wobbling around. Secondly, to swivel, like if you wanna record yourself, if you wanna turn the screen around, not only do you have to loosen that, but you have to tilt this all the way down just to access the screw to swivel. And it's just not worth it. Like half the time when I want to swivel, I just end up taking a whole thing off and just turning it around myself because it's just too much work to, first of all, find that Allen key, which I have in my bag somewhere. And then yeah, whatever. That's basically it. I'll stop crying. I love you small rig, no hard feelings but this is, you know, this is some bullshit. So basically TLDR, I hate this thing. And if you have any recommendations for a better EVF mount, please leave them in the comments because this makes me want to throw not only my camera into the wall, but myself as well. But I can't do that because I live in America and I don't have health insurance. And lastly, the creme de la crap, the little cherry on top or what have you, is this Moment Center Bloom. This is the 10% diffusion filter that they sell and i pretty much keep this on all the time so when you're shooting digital video and whatnot it has this very digital clinical look to it of course digital that's redundant but it has this very clinical like too clean look to it and what this does is make everything look a bit more filmic it also softens up the highlights and almost puts like this glow around light sources that looks a bit like halation on Cinestill 800T if you shoot film. And it's definitely a stylistic choice. I tend to leave this on everything I shoot just because I like the style of it. But if you're using it, if you're shooting with it, you may not want it on everything. As for me, when it comes to like film and video and music, I hate when things sound or look too clean and digital and whatnot. So. 
this definitely helps it look a bit more analog and that sounds so hipster of me anyway like i was saying before i really interrupted myself is that this takes the digital edge off of your photos and video as moment likes to say about it and i completely agree it makes everything look a bit softer a bit more like film and because i shoot film primarily i do really appreciate that look and that's pretty much it that's the completed rig this is my baby for now at least i've always had commitment issues so we'll see it's a very basic budget setup like i said no rails no lighting no matte box or anything like that but for what i'm doing it gets the job done it's easy to take apart like i said i may add some things to it in the future but for right now this is all i need if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below i'll get back to you as soon as possible feel free to hit me up on social media send me unsolicited rig pics of yourself up if you found this video helpful interesting anything at all please hit that subscribe because it definitely definitely helps me out helps out the channel feel free to follow me on social media feel free to follow me in real life feel free to stalk me it's okay it's all good have a great night